I'm Keith Reynolds, host of Morning Coffee, here with my co-host, Charlene Chamberlain. Um, you know, we, uh, our, our next guest, it, it's pretty interesting, um, which I never knew that it was even there, this, this title. I know. Um, and uh, reading, reading a little bit on the back end of it, uh, very interesting stuff. But, you know, uh, for those folks out there that um, feel that they're losing their memory and they just can't get it, Especially, we have, especially as we age, I think that Absolutely, happens. absolutely. So today we have three-time uh, USA champ, uh, memory champ, Nelson Dallas on our show. Wow. Nelson, welcome to the show. Hi, Nelson. How are hey, you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. You know, Nelson, uh, I found it really interesting. Uh, part of the, the one question was uh, we, me and Charlene were laughing because you don't know how many times you go into a mall and you see people uh, in the parking lot looking for where they parked their car. That's mostly guys, Keith. She says it's mostly guys. I disagree. So, so how, yeah. so how did you become three-time uh, USA Memory Champ? Um, yeah. So a number of years ago, about six years ago, my um, grandmother was um, she passed away from Alzheimer's. Sorry. And uh, yeah, it was something that I learned a lot from, and I was really inspired to try and improve my memory. And I did a lot of research and found out about these memory techniques that exist and this USA Memory Championship. Um, and I made it my goal to kind of try and win it and to train every day and improve my memory. And here I am. Now, do you train physically as well for that? Yeah, I mean, I'll spend a lot of time memorizing stuff, training that way. But a big part of, of brain health is physical fitness as well. So right. I, I spend a lot of time physically exercising as well. What is the extreme uh, memory challenge? Yeah, so the Extreme Memory Challenge is this memory task that scientists at Dark Neuroscience have developed um, in order to identify people who have exceptionally good natural memories. So mine is trained, uh, very good memory, but we're looking for people who just have this skill um, to varying degrees, obviously, uh, but naturally. So participants can go to the website and um, take this task. It's like a little game, a memory game. It takes a few minutes. Um, one day and then you follow up the next day, another few minutes. And uh, the goal is to try and identify these people who have just awesome memories naturally. And with that, we can hopefully develop a drug that will help people with cognitive impairments or improving cognitive abilities. Wow. That's fascinating. That's I, I do have a quick, uh, another quick question I need to throw in there. You know, okay. we, judge our, we judge our eyesight, you know, 2020 is perfect and, you know, obviously anything behind that is worse. But in memory, like, how do you judge that? Is it like if you can remember stuff when you're three year old, three years old, you have great memory? Or, or yesterday. Is, or yesterday. Like, how does that go? Yeah, I mean, there's different kinds of memories. There's people who have great autobiographical memories, like you're saying, they can remember things in their lives with a, a crazy amount of detail. Or there's people who just remember names of everybody they meet, they don't know why, or numbers seem to stick. We're really looking for anybody. Um, even if you don't think that you have a good memory, take the test because we learn a lot from, you know, having a baseline of, of, of the average of how pe most people are with their memories and then having these people who are exceptionally good. And maybe you are and you don't know it. Um, so that's really what we want, just everyone and anybody to take this test and uh, that would give us the best uh, data. Okay. So, you know what, how can, um, how, where are some ways that we can train our memory? Yeah, so um, some of the techniques that I use, um, some get more complicated than others, but the basics of it are, um, you know, when we have to memorize something, whether it's a name or an address or a number, all these things are really um, abstract in a sense. And that's what makes it hard to remember. We only remember the things that are important or things that we can pay attention to. And if it's difficult and kind of foreign looking, then we won't really pay attention to it and we forget it. So the goal is always to take whatever it is you're trying to memorize and to turn it into something meaningful. And the way to do that is to come up with some mental picture for whatever you're trying to memorize and to make it an association to the thing. Um, and, and the better, the, the crazier and weirder and over the top you make this mental picture, the better it's going to stick and you're going to remember it. Okay. Now, is there, is there some type of, uh, just real quick, we only have a couple of minutes, but is there anything that you can uh, kind of test uh, our <laughs> listeners and us on oh, as far as the memory? <laughs> Yeah, we can do a little, you know, like, for example, um, if you wanted to learn the, the first five presidents, right, um, how would you go about that? So that's like a list of things. So you have, you know, Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, and Monroe. 
Um, but you know, those are names, and if you've never seen them before, obviously we have it, and, and we hear them all the time, but you were trying to come up with a picture for each one and kind of create a bizarre story. So um, Washington, I might picture a washing machine, right? So you start with a washing machine, right. and inside the washing machine, you open it up, and there are um, a ton of apples, Adam, Adam's apples, you, right? Yep. You can just picture that, kind of weird. And they come tumbling out of the washing machine, and a chef comes by and picks them all up. He's going to cook them. So Chef Jefferson, Jefferson, right? Um, and he gives it to his son, and suddenly he's mad at his son, right? His son is being a little... A little brat, and he's just mad at his son, Madison. And uh, he sends, because he's mad at his son, he sends him rowing, right? He sends him on a little boat out to the middle of nowhere, and there he becomes an old man. He's a man rowing, Monroe. So you have washing machine, Adam's apples, chef, uh, mad at his son, and man rowing, which wow. is essentially the president. That's pretty intense. That is pretty yeah, intense. Yeah, that's pretty very cool. creative, too. It'd be harder to remember yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I have, so if you didn't remember that silly story, then the actual information, you know? Yeah, that's pretty cool. I have, I just have a quick question. I remember a lot of color and design. That's, that's where, yeah, I can remember clothing items, design items, colors of uh -huh. brochures. It's, 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 yeah, it's kind of crazy, but that's what I'm really good at memory wise. Nelson, that, that's a woman's thing, right? I guess. <laughs> well, it depends. You know, it's like what I said. It's whatever you you happen to be interested or pay attention to a lot, you're, you're probably going to have a better memory in that right. than the other person. I may not even notice that stuff, so yeah. I'm not going to remember it, you know? And I work in color a lot, so I guess maybe yeah. I'm, I'm tuned into that. So, Nelson, how can our listeners and viewers uh, get more information on this stuff and find you? Yep, uh, if they go to the website, extrememorychallenge.com, okay. uh, as one word. Um, it's all there. It's very easy to quickly sign up and take this test. And there's some uh, videos and um, FAQ that they can learn more about the cause and how to improve their memory. Okay. Well, Nelson, thank you for coming on Morning Coffee and being our first hot topic. Thanks, Thanks so Nelson. much for having me. All right. Take care. So who do we have on today? Our esteemed guest is an author, an artist, and an all-around Renaissance man. It's Lou Pexy, and he has several books that he's self-published. Um, they contain all of his artwork and his words, and he's also in the process of um, creating a screenplay, or is your screenplay I'm finished? I'm doing two scripts. One is from this two book, scripts? and one is a black comedy, so one's a little lighter than the scary stuff. Well, let's talk about the first book, Nosferatu, The Untold Origin. And um, we'll have some images of it up on the screen for you a little bit later where you can see some of the artwork. Lou, how long did it take you to create this? Well, this book's interesting because I created this book as a result of a car accident. I lost the ability to read. So originally my intention was not to create a book, but it was an exercise to help me learn how to read again. Through artwork? Through artwork okay. and writing. And uh, the book took altogether three years because there was a lot of, uh, I had a lot of problems with seeing words, the words, and they still do, they mush together. And I think he told me you had vertigo too. And I still, still have that vertigo. sometimes, yes. Yeah. And uh, so the book was an exercise because the cognitive therapy I had at the time really wasn't working well for me. So mm -hmm. I said, well, I really don't want to go through life not being able to read. No. So I decided to do something about it and I created this book because I love the silent film. Mm -hmm. Nosferatu, the silent movie, is a fascinating piece of German filmmaking. But I always wanted to know how this character became the vampire. Mm -hmm. So I wrote an origin the story. The backstory. That's right. what I ended up writing. And I want to pop in here for a minute. Lou also, um, previous to this, and I guess you still do this, is a phenomenal special effects makeup artist. I do yes. that, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So you've always had a love of the vintage horror films. Right? True, yes. And that's, that was really sort of the kickoff for this. What was interesting, I will add, this was also the first time I explored digital art. Um, I still love drawing with oils, I mean painting with oils. Yeah, and let's charcoal. talk about your mediums that you but, use for this. But this book, uh, I mean I would love to have done it with oil painting or charcoal, mm -hmm. Here, maybe but there is about 500 to 600 paintings in there and this was my first experience in creating stuff with the computer, digital art, mm -hmm. and it was a really interesting learning curve. Yes. Nice. Now the hardest thing about it 
was um, I had to learn how to go from RGB to CMYK. So mm -hmm. you're dealing with what you see on the computer screen versus what you see on the printed, printed. page. Yes. Yeah. The first time I did the book, everything was in purple and black. Oh. oh. <laughs> so imagine you spent a year and a half creating, creating all artwork. this artwork. And it comes back to, because I had no idea of this. The conversion, right. All purple and black. And the colors don't look anything like what you have drawn. So I had to go back and redo the book several times until eventually I got it looking right. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a lot of mathematics involved with learning it how to do this, which also was good for my brain. Pretty challenge, my, right? Yeah. <laughs> so how many images are in Nosferatu? I will say approximately 500. I lost count after wow. I hit about 300. 500 wow. images, that's pretty amazing. So where is the book available? It's available and very, there's two comic book stores that have it right now. Lo that, locally? Well, one is Kevin Smith's store in Red Bank. Oh, the famous Red uh, Bank Kevin Street? Smith? Yes. That's where I was born. Mm -hmm. And the other one is locally, and that would be the comic station. And you can also get it off my website, nosferatuorigins.com. Okay. And you brought another book for us to see. I haven't seen this one yet. It's called The Awakened Poe, and the introduction is by Roger Corman. Corman. For those horror fans, you should all know who Roger Corman is. But for those of you who don't, why don't you tell them who Roger Corman is? He is an independent filmmaker <laughs> who's made well over 300 movies. He's launched the careers of Francis Ford Coppola, Martin <laughs> Scorsese, James Cameron, Jack Nicholson. You could go on for a few hours right. listing everybody. Who's yeah. and what was fascinating is I sent this one to him hoping he would do it. And his secretary calls me up and says, well, if he likes it, he'll do it. So what did you send him? The finished book or the prototype of prototype. the book? Prototype. And okay. I also sent him Nosferatu. Mm -hmm. And um, then I get a phone call telling me how much he loves the book. And what was interesting, the introduction actually arrived on my birthday. They didn't know oh, when wow. my birthday was going to be. That's very cool. So it arrived, you know, obviously a few years ago, but it arrived on my birthday. And it was a really That's wonderful That's a nice birthday, birthday gift. Yes, it is. So what did he actually write? Well, you have to open it up and check it out. <laughs> oh, wow. He's in here a lot, right? That's the paragraph. Wow. Very nice. Lou's visual interpretation of Poe's twisted analysis of human nature perfectly complements its dark and complex tones. It's always a great pleasure to discover another artist's rich and unique compilation of images such as the one that Pexy has chosen to share with us. The art that graces the following pages share forever, shall forever be a gift for both the longtime fan and newcomer to the wonderfully dark universe of Edgar Allan Poe, Roger Corman, producer-director. Wow, that is really um, pretty wonderful that he did that for you. How long did it take you to create The Awakened Poe? 18 months. A little shorter than the first one, so I, I guess you lot. got, yeah, I was just going to say, you probably did. Half the problem with doing this was to figure out what stories to put in there. Yeah, absolutely. Because you could, you know, all of his stories are so unique. They're great. Yep. There's a telltale heart in there. Of course. Yeah. That's my favorite one. Yeah, me too. And of course, I'm sure the raven. The raven. Yeah. The black the cat. Popular. Yeah, the black cat. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do some of his lesser known ones, but... Um, That'll be on the next book because I really like uh, Murders in the Room more. Oh, yeah, that's great. Then he wrote a story about a mummy that's really funny. He wrote some really offbeat, funny stuff, too. That you wouldn't think would be typical of Poe. No. Not really. But the comedy, the, the one that's called A Casual Conversation with a Mummy. <laughs> with or a, mummy? a Conversation. I think it's called A Casual, but it might be called A Conversation with, with a mummy. mummy. And these men, they find it, they kind of hijacked this Egyptian tomb and they raised this uh, mummy back from the dead mm -hmm. and they end up, the mummy ends up talking to him and he's kind of befuddled with how much civilization has de-evolved. So the whole movie is sort of a comment on our current society, society right? which was many, you know, over a hundred years ago. But he looked at it and said, wow, things have really not evolved, you know, mm -hmm. they've gone backwards. Mm -hmm. And no, it's, it's a funny. fascinating take on society. Well, it's a true take because, I mean, really, if you look at what goes on in our world, how different is it than a lot of stuff that went on hundreds of years ago? It's, right. it's the same. It's, it's just same. modernized or right. updated. 
in, in the time yeah. that it's happening Clo now. The clothing's changed, maybe. Right, the clothing's you know I mean? changed. Uh, it's really, seriously. <laughs> the music's changed. changed a little, music too. Music hasn't fallen <laughs> better, either. I think that's Steve <laughs> Powell. But yeah. art is still there, and that's a great thing. How long did it take you to create the Awakened Poe? 18, 18 months. 18 months, and this one was about three years, right? Right. How many images are in this book? Close to the same amount. Close it's a smaller the book. Amount. The main right. reason is I created this for usage in school. That's my main goal is to get this into the school system. Mm -hmm. Now that would be a way for youth to kind of take an interest in Poe, especially since you have some great artwork in here, other than the traditional way through their English right. class. So are you considering doing some workshops in some of the area schools with I'll, this book? That's what I'm trying to figure out how to pull that off. Yes. Okay. Well, we might we be able to talk. help you with that. What's next on the books for you? I want to tackle doing The Legend of Medusa. I think I told you about yes. that. But I'm rewriting it so that she's the hero. Oh. And um, it's a neat take because it's... been. Yeah, well, yeah. I like the idea of somebody who has a problem, a disability of sorts, and making it into something that's positive. something positive. Yeah. Well, you look at like a lot of the characters out there that are villains. Something happened and in their life that, that made, made them, them that, that way, way, and that's their and reaction. Then Medusa, you know what happened to Medusa? I like that yeah, span. You I know what I mean? And then she becomes, you know, sort but, of a hero. And yeah. People understand her. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty interesting. And that, in a way, kind of art imitates life. life. You yeah. know, absolutely. So, Lou, I, you know, I just want to say through your disability, you have really been able to go deep inside and pull out all this wonderful create creativity that maybe might not have happened. Absolutely. You know, I know you always have been a great, a wonderful creator, but I don't think you would have been as prolific if you did not have had the time and Well, you have to have some, like, to some bad it. things happen to you to find, to get yeah. some, I don't know. It's a stimulus. How yeah. about that? Yeah. Well, it actually was healing for you to do this, right. which is really pretty mm -hmm. wonderful. And I always do feel that um, art and music can heal. Absolutely. You just give it a chance. I agree 100% yeah. with that. Where can it, our viewers and listeners find you? Do you have a website? I do. Um, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, under, spell Lewis your email. P-E-C-S-I. And it's L-O-U-I-S. Correct. Mm -hmm. I have a question, real quick, yeah. before we, we, we go to commercial break. But right. why, uh, why comic, why comic book store? Oh, is that what it's, is that what the target market is? Or I mean, no. Um, the Awakened Poe. I'd love to get it into Barnes and Noble and stuff like that. But it's the problem I'm dealing with is they want sixty percent of your profit, and when you're ouch, yeah, you're self -published. it's not easy. Get your hand out of my what? There you go. It's self published. That's hard. <laughs> I'm trying wow. to get, now with Poe, I had two publishers, as I did with Nas, but the problem I also have is they say, well, it's an expensive book, I'm not anybody known, Well, cetera, it is, and it's full, it's full color, you know, and that's, that's it, it's full color. Every page is filled with artwork, and that's that expensive that's to insane. print. What about Amazon? That, it does well. I have it on Kindle. You do have it on Kindle. Oh, okay, yeah. that's good. And, um, and Amazon. Yeah. yeah Amazon. All right, that's okay. great. So, yeah, that's good to know. So you can find Lou's books on Amazon and Kindle. You can certainly reach out and contact him through Facebook if you're interested. If you're interested in booking him for a workshop or an, an author talk series on these books and how he created these books, I'm sure he'd be willing to help you out with that as well. Right? Absolutely. Right? And the webs. do you have a website? Yeah. Yes, Again? I do. It is NosferatuOrigins.com. Okay, let's spell that. Where do you awaken to Poe dot com. Oh, okay, we have two. So Nosferatu, what, spell that for our... N-O-S-F-E-R-A-T-U, and then the word origins.com. Okay, that's great. 